Hello, today I'm going to explain Jupiter's winds to you. Now, before we begin, we have to ask ourselves, what is Jupiter? Well, Jupiter is the fifth planet from the Sun. It's the largest planet. It's right there. It is so large that 1,300 Earths could make up its size. And as you can see here, the great red spot, which we'll get to later, is about two to three times larger than Earth is. Now, what about Jupiter's atmosphere? Well, it's mainly composed of hydrogen he and helium, and also contains a little bit of ammonia and water vapor. Now, what does this have to do with Jupiter's winds? Well, Jupiter has winds similar to Earth, but not quite the same. Earth's winds, you might have heard them being called like the prevailing winds or the trade winds, but they're, they're mainly driven by like high and low pressure systems. Jupiter's winds, you can see by this picture here, that they move in opposite directions, like each one, similar to Earth's, but they also act as the latitudes of Jupiter, and they divide them into different sections, as you can see by this picture here. But why do these winds, like, occur? Well, there's several different models representing how they can occur. The three main models are called the shallow models, the deep model, and the internal heat model. The shallow and deep models are very similar in the fact that they use liquid dynamic to explain the winds. The shallow model was the first model to be developed back like in the 1960s. They describe that Jupiter's jets are driven by small-scale turbulence that is created from the convection of moisture in the outer layer of Jupiter's atmosphere. This moist convection is created from the evaporation and condensation of water, which is one of the primary reasons for weather on terrestrial planets like Earth. Now with this model, the vortices, I believe they're called, um, feed the jets by merging into them. Now the vortices are all those little white, red, and brown spots that you see on Jupiter. They're basically storms and of high winds in Jupiter's atmosphere. And you might know the great red spot or the little red spot which was discovered in 2006 or the oval that was discovered in 2000. These are all vertices. But anyways, back to the shallow model. The shallow model also has many problems. The main problem is that it doesn't explain the equatorial jet. This jet is really strong, like rotating. It rotates fairly rapidly compared to the other jets. But with the shallow model, the jets are much slower than the equatorial jet is. So it just it doesn't fit the right observation. Additionally, the jets on Jupiter are very stable, and with a shallow model, they are described as very unstable. So the second model is considered or called the deep model, and it was created in 1976. It describes that Jupiter's winds are caused from liquid in its atmosphere or below its atmosphere, basically causing pressure changes. These changes would then affect these cylinders, basically, that are around Jupiter's atmosphere. These cylinders then allow the gases from the lower levels of Jupiter's atmosphere to circulate to the higher levels of Jupiter's atmosphere and vice versa, in turn causing winds. Unlike the shallow model, the deep model explains the equatorial winds and how they're so much different than the other winds on Jupiter. It also explains how the winds are so much more stable than the shallow model did. And it also describes the independence of the winds and that they don't rely on each other. But the deep model is still not perfect, it still has problems. The main problem is that it just doesn't create many broad jets, just tons of these small, narrow ones. It also hasn't really been able to be simulated too well. Now, the final model isn't really a primary model, but it 
still can affect its winds. So basically, Jupiter radiates a lot of heat. It radiates more heat than it absorbs from the sun. Now all that internal heat is likely to be able to play a part in the circulation of all the gas in its atmosphere creating these winds. One explanation with this is that Jupiter's winds are created mainly by like a thermostat. Like Because Jupiter doesn't have much of a tilt on its axis, it, its upper atmosphere is heated much more unevenly. So when I say it's like a thermostat, it's, it's basically releasing more heat at its poles than it is at its equator, and then and then the winds lead to the atmosphere being more uniform. So which model's right? You can't really say. They all have some problems, but they don't necessarily completely cover every detail of Jupiter's atmosphere. But they do help, under, help understand potentially why Jupiter's winds act as they do. So if you have any questions, just leave them below, and I'll try to answer them to the best I can. Thank you. Thank you.